Aloha, and welcome again to The Believer's Journey. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Today I have an interesting topic. I've taught this a lot in my different seminars or my classes, and I just want to bring it to you. And we're going to talk about love, we're going to, but we're going to talk about love in the Greek language. Um, we have one word in English and many words, one word in many other languages uh, for the word love. But however, we have five different words in, in the Greek language. And I want to present that today and, and see if I can make it interesting for you. Anyway, uh, before we start, I want to say thank you for um, supporting our, our ministry. I want to thank you for watching our videos and sharing them. For all of you who are continuing to subscribe to our channel, I uh, appreciate that. I want to thank all of you who are uh, supporters financially, supporters uh, sh just sharing and, and writing to us and, and letting us know how you feel or any questions and so forth. I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Guerrero CPA, Guerrero Law, and uh, Trade Show Displays. So anyway, after now that I've got that out of the way, I'd like to talk to you a little quickly about love. And I want to talk about the five Greek words for love. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I know I've done this a few times. So here we go. And, um, and there we are. So when we look at uh, love, uh, we look at love, but we look in the Greek language, we look at love, we look at five different Greek words, okay? First off, love has many different things, or means many different things to many different people. For example, I could say that I love my wife, I love my father, I love ice cream, uh, yet there are three very different meanings of love, okay? In the Greek language, there are literally five different words to express our one word for love. So when you see the word love in the scriptures, uh, it may be a different word in the Greek than what we see in our, our language because they translate it that way. Okay, so let's start with the first one. The first word we, we find in the Greek language is eros. Okay. Eros basically means erotic or sexual love. It is basically self-pleasing. All right. We can find that uh, in the scriptures. We can find that in writings. It's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. And that is your first word here. Your second word is very different. It's called epithumia. Epithumia is twofold. It's really different than all the other ones. And it, it's a love of desire, okay? It has a positive and a negative meaning. It's the only word in the, in the language, in the Greek language for love, that has a double opposite meaning, okay? So for on the positive end of it, it means affection, okay? However, in the negative, it's an appetite or a lust, if you will, okay? Uh, it is something you long for or covet. It's, uh, it's a kind of love that causes somebody to want. So if I have an affection for someone or something, that, that is epithumia. If I lust after an apple, that's epithumia. So you have opposites and you have double meanings in this word epithumia. So that's number two. Number three is storge. Now, storge is not also not found anywhere in the scripture, okay? But it has a definite idea of something we can all relate to, okay? It, it, has, it means it's a family or protective love. It's a sense of belonging. Like, for example, you have a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. This is a sense of belonging because, uh, for example, if you have a brother or father or mother or whatever, you, you have that belonging. You have that sense of togetherness. But you also have, coupled with that, that uh, word storge, is a sense of protection. I protect you. I'm protective of you because you are my sister. So because of the family relationship, because of that family tie, there's that protective feeling of that person because they're like a blood relative, if you will. Now, I want to go on with this one because it says, I say, the relationship of believers, okay, Christians and Jews within the Jewish community uh, would fall under this kind of love, okay? Though the Greek word uh, storge is not found in the scriptures, all the indications of the family type and protection of the brethren are pressed between the pages of the scriptures, okay? So when I say that uh, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, that's a sense of belonging. And because we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a sense of protection for one another. That's storge love, 
okay? Though, like I said, the word isn't in the scriptures, but the very definition and the meaning are all through the Bible, and you can really see it, okay? So, for example, we are a family. As believers, we are a family, and I believe that God expects us to live as a family, okay, as his family. He is our father, all right? All right, let's go to the fourth one. Fourth one is phileo. Now, phileo is probably the most common word for love that we find in, in all of humanity, okay? When I say, oh, I'm in love with somebody, or I love him, or he is my friend, or so forth, that we're speaking of phileo love, okay? And so here it is. So phileo love is friendship, okay? It is a response from our emotions, okay? It, for other words, it, it, it means uh, I give to you because you gave to me. I feel for you because you feel for me. Because you are my friend, I am your friend. So it has that response of your emotions to that person. All right. It is the strongest binding love that humans have. Okay. It's the kind of love that we have because we are first loved. Okay. This word gives recognition to friendships. Literally, it means brotherly love. So when we have, like in the United States, we have uh, the city uh, Philadelphia. I think you have that Philadelphia in, in, the, in the scriptures and in old Asia. Um, that means the city of brotherly love, okay? It says, you are my friend. Even so, it has a feel of condition to it, okay? I am your friend because you are my friend. So if you are not my friend, I'm not going to be your friend. So the phileo doesn't fit there because it doesn't express itself. There is no emotion. So it draws from your emotion. And this is the kind of love that makes best friends, Okay. So it's that bonding that it's the emotional tie to somebody else that builds that friendship and creates best friends, if you will. OK, finally, the fifth one is agape. Now, I know a lot of you who study the Bible, read the Bible, have heard of the word agape. Some of you uh, think that it's only a godly love, but I want to define it more realistically so we understand it isn't only a God from uh, love from God. OK, it has something more to it than that. And we can all touch in into this love. OK, it's an unconditional love or a divine love. OK, it's an act of the will. It's a choice. For example, the lo this love has no strings attached and no expectations of anything in return. So if I give to you by choice, I act upon my will to give of myself to you. I am doing this without any expectations of anything in return, okay? That is agape, all right? Um, it says, I give myself to you no matter what happens, okay? It is void of all conditions, any and all conditions. It's the kind of love a mother has for her child or the kind of love God has for us. Uh, it doesn't require, require any condition in order to receive it or give it. And what's most important here, there is no emotion involved. You do the loving thing because it's the right thing to do. That, in a nutshell, at the bottom there, that is what it is. We, uh, in agape love, um, we give of ourselves, not because we feel we give it of ourselves because we are commanded to do so, or it's the right thing to do. We do it out of a choice, a choice of our will, rather than a choice of our emotion. Okay, huge and important to understand. All right, now agape love. We're gonna we're gonna key in on agape love um, and take this a little bit further. So agape love is the kind of love that Jesus commands us to have for other believers. Okay. Agape love is very specific in scripture in regards to our loving one another. Our loving one another uh, has a magnificent determination on the outcome of our eternal existence with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay, this is, this is really, really important. In fact, Jesus says, if you uh, love me, you'll obey me. I mean, he, he uses this agape over and over again in different modes. The Gospel of John uh, uses that word 90 some odd times, and in his other writings, he uses it another 30 times. 
So agape love is something that's very important to our uh, walk in the Lord. Our, our claiming that we are a believer in Jesus would would stem from it or have a foundation of agape. Okay, because that is really what it is. Now, Jesus said this. He said, a new command I give you that you love, agape, one another, okay, as I have loved you. So love one another, okay, we're agape still, by all, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples by the way that you love or agape one another. He says this in John 13, verses 34 and 35, all right? So what Jesus is saying here is that we are to love other believers unconditionally. I mean, this is the way Jesus loves us. This is the way he responded to us and, and gave to us was unconditionally. In fact, Jesus says that we are to love other believers in the same way that he loves us. So, so in the very nature that God has received and reached down and taken care of our brokenness, our Lord has not suggested but rather commanded that we do the same thing for each other, okay? And that's really important to understand that because a lot of us walk around thinking that we need to love phileo, love one another. Oh, I don't, I don't feel that for that person. Well, I don't know if I really like them, you know, but we're commanded to agape, to give regardless of our feelings. And that's important to understand as a believer because if you're not doing that, you're breaking the very command that Jesus gave us. Uh, in chapter 13 of John, that he gives us a new command that we agape one another, okay? But it's not enough that we pray for each other or spend a little bit of our excess money or time. We are to love unconditionally with all of our being, okay? The scriptures teach it, and Jesus commands it, all right? Now, in 1 John 3, 16, John says this, by this we know love, agape, that he, Jesus, laid his life down for us, and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. In other words, for other believers in Jesus. All right, that's a very important scripture. To love your brother or sister in Christ is to become what Jesus was and is to the church. All these things come to you as you honor God and do his will. So what does this look like? All right, number one, healing. Uh, comforting and uplifting one another. Okay, all of us aren't, not, not all of us can walk around laying hands on one another and healing our ailments and so forth, but we can comfort, we can uplift. That's healing also. And we need to look, uh, look at that. Okay, number two, spending time with each other. We need to uh, spend quality time with each other. And, and that's a, a thing that Jesus did. Number three, praying for and with each other. And, um, Ephesians chapter 4, it says that we need to get together, be together, uplift one another, pray for each other, pray with each other, that we can uh, make strong the kingdom of God. And I think that's really important that we understand that. Number four, feeding or providing for one another. Jesus fed the church, okay? He took care of the church, um, provided for the church. When we go to Moldova, I've watched people in Moldova who are poor give food to those who are poorer, okay? I've seen those who are poor give clothing to those who are poorer. So they provided for them. I've seen them give their time, give them hugs. You know, this is a part of providing for, the, for one another, okay? And I think that's really, really extremely important we understand that. And number five, serving or laying down our life for one another. Jesus at the upper in the upper room before the, before the Lord's supper, he had all the disciples come before him and he washed their feet, okay? So this is something that we are commanded to do. Jesus says do likewise. So we are to serve one another. All right? So here we have it, the five Greek words for love, eros, epithumia, storge, Phileo and agape. And there you have it, all five. You have a couple of them that are not in the scriptures at all. One of them is kind of, uh, you know, here and there, but you have phileo and agape. One more thing about phileo and agape I want to mention, because uh, I saw this written in and I wanted to respond to this. Uh, the question was asked, why did Jesus ask Peter 
uh, if you loved him three times. So here, here's the, the verse. And, and Jesus says, Peter, do you love me more than these? Okay, he's saying, do you agape me more than these? And Peter's response is, you know that I love you. He's saying, you know, I phileo you. What he's literally saying is, you know, you know that I'm your friend. So Jesus says, do you love me? Do you lay down your life? Do you give to me unconditionally more than anyone else? And Peter says, you know I'm your friend. Jesus asks it a second time. Do you lay down your life? Do you give to me unconditionally more than anyone else? And Peter says again, Jesus, you know I'm your friend. And Jesus the third time says, Peter, do you phileo? Are you my friend? And Peter breaks down and cries. He changes that word from agape to phileo. And Peter responds in tears. So it's not like he used the same word as we see it, love, 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 love. He uses agape, agape, phileo. Okay, so we need to understand there is definite meanings and differences in those words. And as we read the scriptures, understand that, that you know, we are commanded to agape, love one another. But understand also that if we want to build friendships, phileo love is, is not, it is something that we give from our, out of our emotion. It is not a selfish love. It's a love that we give that binds, binds friendships, binds families, binds things that, that we emotionally feel for one another. And that's the beauty of, of all these five words and the beauty of love. Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. And um, I, I hope this helps you understand uh, the word love. I kind of like going through these um these Greek words, I want to go through some Hebrew words in the future. I've had actually positive response from these uh, different uh, words from the Greek that we translate into our languages that have somewhat of a different feel to them. So I think I'm going to go on. I might even have one more Greek word the next time, and then I'm going to go into some Hebrew. Um, okay, so I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this helps you. Uh, do pass this along, share this, and... Uh, you take care. Aloha.